Right now we're going to keep the conversation going with Mike McGarry of the Press of Atlantic City. We welcome in, him in every week at this time, get his knowledge and insight on the high school sports scene in South Jersey. Good morning, Mike. Hey, Sully, how are you? When is the uh, tip-off classic for seven year, seventh grade uh, basketball? Uh, we actually got off to a uh, good start this week with an exciting win always, over an always tough Jackson team, 39-36. So we're 1-0, and and you can't go 2-0 and until you're 1-0 and and every other <laughs> cliche I've heard for 25 <laughs> years. So we're just going to look to take them one at a time, possession by possession, and see what happens there. Was that the aircraft carrier game? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> you know, one of those specials. I think we were in Madison Square Garden for it. So. Nice, man. So uh, you and I were both at the Pleasantville game last night and really surprising uh, how they were able to get off to such a great start again in the regular season game. They were up 25 nothing in the first quarter, this time around 28 uh, nothing. Man, that team was just clicking on all cylinders last night. Yeah, I mean, uh, Pleasantville, you go back to the Buna game of a couple of weeks ago where Buna, who, who's undefeated in 9-0, and and I think an excellent football team, goes into Pleasantville and beats Pleasantville 20-13. to And you kind of look at, you know, you kind of wondered at that point, which way was Pleasantville going to go? Were they going to, you know, go down one path where they would continue to, maybe that would knock some of their luster off them, and would they recover? Or would they use that game as a kind of, hey, we got to get our act together? And obviously it's the, hey, we kind of got to get our act together because, you know, they had a week off. They come back and beat Middle Township 55-10 in the last game of the regular season. And then last night they were just flying from the opening kickoff on both defense and offense. And, you know, I must have gotten, you know, seven, eight texts. Uh, during the course of that game, you know, kind of people asking, hey, what is going on in Pleasantville? Pleasantville just overwhelms Cedar Creek 57 nothing in a score that you know, I, I'm fairly confident that nobody saw coming. Yeah, I mean, you knew Cedar Creek would have trouble with them. Uh, they had a couple starters out due to injury, and they were a little bit banged up. Uh, but they're traditionally a very good team in, in the state playoffs, so that was pretty surprising to me. I mean, it was 44 nothing at halftime. Yeah, I mean, it it was uh, it happened quick, and I think what really happened. I kind of wrote about it today. Um, it's in the story in the paper on pressofac.com. I mean, Muhammad Torre played by far his best game of the season. You know, the linebacker, running back, Division One prospect for Pleasantville had had a good season. Well, last night he maybe made that a great season with an effort. You know, fourteen, fifteen carries. 224 yards, two touchdowns, but he just set the tone immediately, running hard between the tackles, breaking tackles, getting to the ball quickly on defense. And the rest of the Greyhounds uh, followed that uh, Torrey's lead. And Pleasantville's got playmakers. Samir Jones, I thought he, at quarterback, had maybe his best game of the season. Brian Stallworth with an interception and a great catch. You know, Jabril Shakur, you know, breaks several tackles and returns a punt 72 yards for a score. So I just think, you know, plus the man, Coach Chris Sacco said, you know, they needed big games from all their big players, and they got it last night. And, and truth of the matter is, they're going to have to be even better this Friday night coming up when they go travel to play uh, top seed, undefeated, and defending champion Haddonfield in what should be a, a great setting and a great game over there at Haddonfield. We're talking with Mike McGarry of the Press of Atlantic City. And, Mike, a couple things stood out to me about that game at Pleasantville last night. Uh, one was the play of the offensive line. Uh, nobody really even knows any of those guys' names, but they played a great game. And also, one thing that, that maybe has gotten a little bit overlooked is uh, when Ernest Howard became eligible after transfer from Mainland, he slots into one of those linebacker spots. And when you talk about a linebacking crew of him, Torrey, and Jabril Shakur, that's, that's one of the best in South Jersey. And they, they really shut down – pretty much everything Cedar Creek was trying to do offensively. Yeah, I think they held Cedar Creek to, what, 25 yards of offense in the first half, and the second half was running clock, so there wasn't much offense there. But you're right, you look at those linebackers, and then you look at the secondary with Elijah Glover and Stallworth back there. I mean, it's a really, really tough Pleasantville defense that was obviously operating, you know, on, on all gears last night. 
And uh, like I said, Pleasantville, you know, appears to be peaking at the right time. This is, the, you know, that was the best game they played all season last night. And this is the time of year when you want to do it. And uh, just a great sort of celebration afterwards, being around the Pleasantville post-game huddle. You know, 15 years uh, between home game, home playoff games, their first playoff win in 15 years, uh, you know, dumping you know, water buckets on Coach Sacco's head. Uh, I don't think anybody who saw Pleasantville go three and forty-seven over uh, you know uh, a five-year span or zero oh and ten in Coach Sacco's first season kind of uh, expected to see what they saw last night. And Mike, uh, Josh, and I were talking about this earlier in the show. Very similar to Vineland. I mean, you have two coaches who really didn't have much, uh, if, if any, head coaching experience. The the school boards at, at those respective schools kind of took a chance on their vision of the future and it's really been paying off Vineland got their first playoff win in school history since they started the playoffs in the early 70s and uh, coach Russo has been doing a great job we had him on earlier in the show kind of almost like mirror images of each other the, the schools have always had talent walking the hallways it's just a matter of kind of getting them all together getting to, them to believe in uh, a vision and also getting them to understand that to be a winner a coach is going to have to be tough on you yeah, I mean, two. You're exactly right. Pleasantville and Vineland were two football jobs where if somebody took those jobs, you'd say, you know, grab them by the shirt collar and say, "What are you thinking of? <laughs> Why do you want to be the coach of a program?" You know, nobody can win there. And uh, Dan Russo and and Coach Sacco go into, you know, Coach Sacco goes into Pleasantville. Dan Russo goes into Vineland and just completely turns the program around, uh, turns around the attitude of the program, gets the kids believing, and, you know, success begins to, uh, uh, you know, success leads to more success. And I give all the credit in the world to Dan Russo and Violin. I think this was a huge year for Violin football, and I think last night was a huge win for Violin football from this perspective. You know, Violin has had some good years in the past, and they come off a really two good years in 2016 and 17 where they have Isaiah Pacheco and Neam Anderson. It would have been easy, especially with the schedule Violin played, to fall back to a 1-8, and 2-8 and eight season, and everybody would have said, okay, you know, Violin's back to being Violin. But Coach Russo and the Fighting Clan, fighting clan players they go three and five against a tough schedule, and one of the things I think you got to notice is, you know, my column on Friday uh, that's still available on PressofAC.com took a look at, you know, the West Jersey Football League schedules, and that a lot of good teams might have had sub 500 records. Well, you see what those teams did in the playoffs last night: Shawnee at two and six wins, Violent at three and five wins. You see what they kind of did: Timber Creek at three and five wins. You kind of see that these teams with sub 500 records that play tough schedules, you know, you kind of saw what they did last night in the playoffs. But getting back to Violent, it would have been easy for Violent to take a step back. Instead, they don't. Without their quarterback, Ryan Shelton, who's an outstanding player, without him, who's out with a broken collarbone, they beat a traditionally tough Toms River North team, and they get that first playoff win in school history. They add another little notch to the resume, and that's just going to continue the success that Violin has going forward. So this year, a big year, and last night, maybe the biggest win since Coach Russo's been there at Violin. Yeah, Mike, you make a great point about the West Jersey Football League schedule and that two-year cycle. It, it almost kind of builds in uh, an excuse. If you do have two great years with, with maybe some Division One talent, they graduate, then you get the new schedule, which is tougher. It's almost easy to say, oh, yeah, well, we got a tough schedule, so we're going to take a step back for the next two years. But the, some of these teams are just like, hey, no, we're going to play who's in front of us. You saw that with Millville, with Vineland this year. Um, and and it's, it's great to see that they're not using that built-in excuse. They're going to say, hey, we might take a few losses during a regular season, but we like playing this tougher schedule because it's going to get us ready for, ready for playoff football. Yeah, I, 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 I see it does get you ready for playoff football, but I think going forward the West Jersey Football League has to think about in the next two-year cycle – making the divisions consistent and then giving teams a choice of what type of uh, crossover games they want to schedule. Because for every Shawnee and Timber Creek and Vineland that won last night, you mentioned Cedar Creek. 
which played as tough a Group 2 schedule as any Group 2 team in the state, well, they kind of got a little beat up by that schedule. You know, they're missing a couple starters last night. And then in their playoff game, they kind of faced a, a buzzsaw in Pleasantville. Not to say if Cedar Creek was completely healthy, would they have won last night? The way Pleasantville played, Pleasantville would have been tough to beat, but maybe it wouldn't have been 57 nothing. So, you know, Cedar Creek's the other side of it, where, you know, these teams get these schedules that are just brutal from the get-go. They make having a winning record just about impossible. So, uh, you know, I think that's just something, as I wrote about in my column that's still available on com. that, uh you know, the West Jersey Football League has to look at in the future. But you're absolutely right. I mean, obviously, Shawnee's playoff ready. Millville, they have a little adversity last night against a good Winslow Township team. Millville pulls away in the second half to win. And now you've got some really great games uh, next weekend that I'm excited about. Millville, Shawnee, Buna, Pensgrove, uh, Pleasantville, Haddonfield. Some really, really great playoff matchups. But I'm really looking forward to next weekend. Yeah, Mike, I don't know what the, the West Jersey Football League can do about these schedules because uh, when you look at a team like Atlantic City, I mean, they kind of have to take into consideration who's graduating from these two-year runs because there was no exactly. no way Atlantic City should have played a schedule like they did this year. Exactly, and, and I pointed that out in the column. It really wasn't fair. I mean, before the season even kicked off, Atlantic season, they were Millville, Vineland, Timber Creek, St. Joe, crossovers with Eastern and Williamstown, not to mention Holy Spirit on Thanksgiving. You know, my idea is if you make the divisions consistent based on enrollment and geography, so you're basically playing the same core of four or five teams every year, That'll account for the normal up and down, say, in, like, one right. year. That's a good you know, point, yeah. Look at these, the Cape Atlantic, one year, Mainland's good. Next year, Abzigami's good. So your division is consistent. And then you can take a look at yourself. Your, you know, how you – well, I might have gone three and seven this year, but I had a lot of sophomores who think we're going to be pretty good as juniors and seniors. So maybe we'll go out and schedule tougher crossover games. Or – uh, I made the playoffs last year at 6-4, and four, but, you know, we graduate 25 seniors and we're going into a little bit of a rebuilding phase. Maybe we'll get a little bit more. We'll look for more teams, that, you know, that are rebuilding like us in our crossover games. But I just don't think it's fair to these teams to give them absolutely killer schedules uh, that kind of some of them have no chance uh, when the season begins. And there's another side to that, too, Mike, uh, and I was talking to Coach Sacco from Pleasantville early, earlier in the year about this, is they didn't have any kind of choice in their crossover games, so they were getting crossover games that really gave them minimal power points, so they, they had to go 6-2 and two just to get a four right. seed. Exactly, and that's what I'm talking about. If you create a pool where, uh, as I wrote in the column, if you create a pool of, like, Group 2 teams and Group 3 teams to cross over and every – you mandate that a team has to play two crossovers against West Jersey football team, then you'll know, like, hey, if you're Pleasantville, uh, let me go out and schedule a Haddonfield. Let me see if uh, I can get a West Deptford on the schedule. So, because uh, I know I'm going to be pretty good uh, this year. Conversely, if you're Atlantic City and you say, hey, we're rebuilding, you know, let me look for a team that's kind of rebuilding with me a little bit rather than, you know, have no say and get a schedule that's really crushing. So, I mean, I just think giving some teams some flexibility and keeping the divisions consistent uh, would make for, for better uh, better football, basically. Because, you know, the, the big story was the, the outcry about the playoffs. How is the 2-6 and six team making the playoffs? Well, you see how, what a 2-6 and six team Shawnee did last night. You see what a 3-5 and five Timber Creek did last night. You know, uh, a 3-5 three 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 and and Island team. You still there, Mike? Yeah, I'm still here, yeah. Sorry, we had a little bit of uh, scratchiness going on there. <laughs> right. It's not rapping or uh, breaking down a DJ record or something there. That, that was Josh. I blame it on him. <laughs> <laughs> But, uh, yeah, actually, you mentioned some, some great games coming up next week. So, um, it's really the best time of year for high school football. And uh, that's why you make the big bucks, man, to come up with these great ideas. 
Well, I mean, it's it's exciting time of year. The semifinals will be great next week, like I said, and uh, I'm on my way to Delcy right now for uh, after a Friday night of football. There's nothing like a Saturday morning of of good cross country on nice. a on a windy day. So uh, <laughs> I'm getting ready for that. So, like you said, this is the best time of year, and uh, just uh, happy to be able to still enjoy it. You must be going through the dead zone of the Pinelands or something with, with that phone in- interruption there. Yeah, I'm at, I'm 195, so who knows where, what, what might have happened. What are, you, yeah. what are you, in Shimong or something? <laughs> Here in the woods of New Jersey, exactly. I don't know how to get to Delcy. I just put it in my phone and make a couple of lefts and rights, and all of a sudden I'm on uh, in Franklin Township. So. <laughs> we appreciate the time, Mike. I know you're busy. got to get going. So uh, thanks for taking a few minutes and breaking things down for us. We'll catch up with you next week, buddy. All right, Sully, always a pleasure. Thanks for having me on. Talk to you next Saturday. You got it. Thanks, Mike.